Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. And we're really stoked today because normally we're talking to guests that are on the mainland or other places around the world. But today we have a very special guest. I've actually been trying to reach out to him for a little while, maybe a year or two, to get him on our radio show. We just didn't seem to be able to make connection. But we have a, a guest today. Uh, we have with us Kainoa Lee. He is a, a master in uh, many, in many, he's a martial artist practitioner, but he's a master in the ancient Hawaiian martial art called the Lua. And we're going to be exploring that and, uh, and what we can learn, uh, how to apply that to our spiritual lives. Be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, we have in our, in our uh, website, deepadventure.com, we have... Uh, Bear's School of Manliness. It's a three-year curriculum that touches each month on a different area of manliness. We have, uh, uh, for an example, fitness to witness. We have one on um, uh, how a man treats a woman defines him. We have one on the virtue of prudence. So over a three-year cycle, the men go through the curriculum. It has audio. It has audio for, from Father Bryce Lundgren, the cowboy priest in Wyoming. We have audio and video from Daniel Markham, Daniel Dumu Markham, who does our country ups on our, on our, on our radio show. There's uh, written content from me and some video content from me too. And what you do is once a month you go through one of these lessons and then um, uh, once a month we get together on a Zoom call and we talk story. But the most exciting thing about the Bear School of Manliness is for men who have sons, they can have their lo own login. They're not, they're not allowed to be part of the um, man cave itself, but you can have your own man cave in your home with your sons if they're confirmation age or older, and they can go through this monthly curriculum with you. So we're really stoked about uh, the Bear School of Manliness. And one of the areas that we talk about in Bear School of Manliness is that a man needs to be dangerous. A man needs to uh, be willing to uh, stand his ground, to know what he believes and be willing to defend that, to know, to know who he loves and being able to defend them. So someone who is able to know, to know what they're about, know what they stand for, uh, while not provoking a fight, not, being a, not letting someone push, push them over either. And that goes, for, that goes in the realm of, of, of spiritual warfare. It goes in the realm of business. It also goes into the realm of actually uh, phys being willing to physically um, uh, take care of business if you if you find you or your family or someone or, or others are in jeopardy and we have I can't think of a better guest to have on our show right now than uh, I Olo Olo Olohe or I might call him Sifu Kai Lee he is a master in the Hawaii the ancient art of the Hawaiian Lua it's something that I've been fascinated in my own my whole life I've I've trained in many different martial arts uh, and uh and especially in the area of, nin of ninjutsu, which I know uh, uh, Kai uh, uh, you know, is, has an awareness of and knows Master Hayes. So I'm very glad to have with us as a guest today, uh, Kai Lee, a master of the ancient Hawaiian lua. Aloha, Kai. Aloha, e malamapono, auli makahiki o. Okay, you got to tell us what that means. Tell everybody what that means. So aloha e malamapono. Aloha is the Hawaiian word that many associate with hello and goodbye, but it's more than that. So the word ha in Hawaiian is the breath of life. So to extend a greeting as a warrior, as a man, two men would touch foreheads and noses and inhale and exhale the same breath, right? Which would take a tremendous amount of courage in the last two years of the pandemic, of course. But even before that, and not having any issues having to do with health. It's a far more trusting and intimate type of a greeting of true peace in the sense that in the Western world, you would shake hands because you're offering your weapon hand, you're offering your sword hand as a gesture of peace and respect. And all martial arts at their very core begin and end with respect, respect being the key tenant of any set of chivalry or code of 
of conduct that warriors would have. So to exchange the ha is to exchange the breadth of life. So in aloha, we say that in a loving way. When we say ohana, the word for family, that is we are of the same breath. When we say hanai, which is to adopt someone into your family, right? Your brothers from another mother, that type of thing. Then that also brings someone into your breath. And we say mahalo or thank you. We are showing gratitude for being included in that person's breath of life, their their vital essence. So aloha e is to extend that, that pure love. And of course, uh, God is love. And then malama pono, malama is to care for and to tend to and pono is to make things right make things as they should be so aloha e malama pono is to love enough to care for and do the hard work and effort that it takes to make everything right and that is a big deal in terms of our role in the world that each one of us is called to serve the lord and each other and that's and cool you today, know I'm sorry, and that that's cool because that, because in your life, as a martial artist, uh, y- you know you you would speak to making things right, taking care, of making things right, but also in your role as a catechist, uh, you give ha. You know, Jesus in the scripture verse says, "My peace I give you, my peace I breathe on you," and he breathed he breathed he breathed his Holy Spirit to his disciples. He gave them ha. So God, God aloha us. He, uh, how else did He aloha us? When God created Adam, when he took him out of the mud and formed him, He breathed the breath of, of He breathed His breath into Adam, and Adam became a living soul. He gave mankind something higher than He gave any of the animals or any of the plants. He gave us a spiritual, rational soul, so we could commune with Him. And here you are as a man. You're a catechist. You're 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 an instructor in the faith, and you're also an instructor in martial arts. Can you tell us a little bit? Give us a little bit of better background into your your walk with the Lord as a Catholic. Interestingly, my my mother was in the convent. She was uh, in formation to become a Franciscan Sister of Perpetual Adoration. She came from a very devout Catholic family that went way back to the... Um, as far as documentation in the French Indian Indian Wars, there was uh, a direct ancestor of my mother's who was in Rogers Rangers uh, before the Revolutionary War um, that was Catholic and made an effort to make sure that his men could have services from the chaplain. So it goes way back that the walk of faith was very important in my mother's family, and she felt that she had a vocation and uh, went to the convent. And then later, when her vocation became to be a, a wife and mother, my father was uh, a convert. So originally, my father's father was Lutheran and his mother was Buddhist. And he knew, though, on my father's side, that there was a strong history connected to Christianity in particular because his ancestor that was responsible for the family coming to that part of the family coming to Hawaii was a martyr in China. Mm. So on the Chinese side of the family, there was a Dr. Leo Li, who was a general and a scholar, and he was one of the, the first converts to Christianity in China in the 1600s. And he was the one who translated the Bible into Chinese in the 1600s. And his descendant was the magistrate or um, governor for an area that welcomed both Catholic and Protestant missionaries because he was someone who highly valued education. He welcomed them to China, you're saying, or to Hawaii? Talking about China. No, this, or Hawaii. The, yeah, okay, he welcomed father. them to China, okay. So basically what happened was he was ordered to, to uh, destroy the missions when it became unpopular mm. for... Um, within the empire imperial china for there to be christian churches and he refused to do it knew that this was going to be his demise so he sent his sons to hawaii uh, Mm. where they married hawaiians um, on a sandalwood ship and then he was martyred so my father knew that history he knew that the christian faith was important to his ancestors and then 
he received a Jesuit education and then he was an uh, army officer in um, he was a team leader in army special forces and a when he was overseas he became a convert through a Catholic chapel so although my mother always takes credit for my father's conversion my father always said it was a, a true act of free will that um, he decided that he wanted to uh, receive his faith formally, and he did so uh, through the army, through through the chaplain. We're, we're and, talking. We're talking with uh, Kainoa Lee. He's a martial artist. He's a master in the uh, Hawaiian uh, martial art of the Lua. He truly is uh, uh, comes from a family uh, that has lived the martial way. It's very interesting when I talked to when I talked to Kainoa just now. I just introduced him and asked him about his faith. He went back to his ancestors. He went back through his mother and through his father's lineage. This is a very Hawaiian uh, thing to do. In Hawaii, uh, when you have a tattoo, the tattoo is quite often a series of triangles that speak to your ancestors. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, Kai and his, his own walk with Jesus, and then we're going to dig into this ancient Hawaiian art of the martial art of the Lua. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bears Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to go to deepadventure.com and subscribe to our newsletter uh, because sometime later on in this radio show, we're going to talk with uh, Kai Lee uh, about a, 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 some of his artwork, some of the paintings that he's done. And you're not going to get to see it if you're listening on the radio or listening to it on a podcast. But if you go to deepadventure.com and subscribe to our newsletter, we actually email you the video version of this radio show on Saturday mornings before it airs on Saturday nights. And you can also just go to our YouTube uh, uh, channel, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure, and subscribe there, and you'll get to see them there too. So I was sorry to interrupt you, Kai. We, we were, you, were talking to us, you were talking story with us about your family heritage. It's very interesting to me uh, how that's, what you, that's where you went with my question because it's not the normal response, uh, but it's very Hawaiian to go back and when someone asks you a question to go back into your ancestry. So can you carry on where you were? Uh, your, your grandfather, I believe you said, had been martyred. He sent his sons here to Hawaii. And uh, your father, I believe you said he was in the military. And you were- Yeah, the great, 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 whatever grandfather was over 200 years ago. Oh, the, I see, okay. The, uh, my 
my dad's family were mostly physicians, mostly, mostly doctors and, uh, were very significant because they also in at court in the kingdom of Hawaii. So a lot of people don't realize that long before being connected with the United States, the kingdom of Hawaii, Hawaii was its own Christian kingdom that was recognized by all the major countries in Europe. So England, France, Russia, everyone acknowledged Hawaii as a Christian kingdom and the old coat of arms of Hawaii. You can see at the very top of the crown, you can see a cross. And culturally, the Kumulipo, which is the origination chant that was passed down through the generations in Hawaiian culture, it actually speaks of the creation in a way that mirrors Genesis in an uncanny way. So when early Hawaiians were being taught about the Christian faith, they right away recognized the truth of a lot of mm -hmm. what was shared in their own chants that had been passed down generations before. And you are correct that it's very Hawaiian to go back because from a Hawaiian perspective, you have to know your roots. You have to understand your past to, to know where you're going. You know, so, the, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. You know, the thing so is, yeah, is, so is that um, there, there is in every culture uh, d demonstrate an upward yearning for God. There, there's no, if you go to a, any remote place on the earth, you can't really go there anymore, but any place you'd ever go on the earth a hundred years ago and find people that had never been exposed to, to Christianity or any other of, of the Western religion or whatever, they all have some sort of religion. There isn't such a thing as a natural atheist. They all have some sort of religion. And in the very word culture, the word cult means religion. And so what, what has happened is, as Father Robert Spitzer talks about it in some of his books, the soul has an upward yearning. You know, we have that inspired by God, a desire for him. And so in our culture, uh, no matter where you go in the world, there is this, there is these, these, these for example, the story of, of the Hawaiian backstory of Genesis, and even an ark of sorts, as in, you find in the uh, Hawaiian tradition. But as you, in, in the stories, in the history is a better way to say it, but in, in every culture, there's elements of that culture that people will recognize Jesus in. They'll recognize who God is. And that's why the Catholic Church always has, from the time we went into China or into India or wherever we've gone, when, when, uh, when we went, uh, I believe it was Pope Gregory who sent the first missionaries to, uh, to, to the Anglo-Saxons. He said, don't change them to become just like us. Uh, but but use their own culture and help them to understand it, be converted. And so it's very Hawaiian. In, in Hawaii, when the gospel was presented, it was immediately, um, of course, the, the queen uh, accepted it. I think Queen Kahumanu, I'm not sure if that's who, or was it Lilio Kalani, I forget now. But the, the royalty accepted it, and then the people accepted it, because they recognized so much of it. But then tell us about your personal conversion, your personal story. So launching off of what you just said, because yeah. you might not be aware of it, I'm also part Native American on my mother's side. So Hawaiian on my father's side, Native American on my mother's side. And interesting to what you said, because it is a beautiful aspect of, of the history of Catholic tradition, is that there are nearly 900 Native American languages that are preserved because early missionaries made missiles and Bibles in the language that they found. So very early on, all over North and South America, missionaries would create prayer books and missiles for the indigenous peoples that they were ministering to. And in the current era, a lot of times it's not so popular to be faithful religious or, or Catholic in particular right now. And people will jump on, oh, missionaries did this or that negative thing. But they forget the good that they did, bringing um, all of that education and medicine and, and also preserving the culture by taking down the language and learning the indigenous right. language and then writing it down and preserving it for the future. So that was something that um, throughout the world was then. I realize that's a controversial topic, but I have to take well, it's it part all because I... Mm -hmm. 
because I am a mixed, a person of mixed ethnicity, and aren't I've always we, felt that, I, but, that you have to own that. Like, are, but aren't uh, we all? Aren't we all a mixture yeah, these days? Sure. Especially in Hawaii, where the most integrated, I think, place that there is in the whole world. But we, 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 you need to expect, you know, respect other people's cultures, but also realize that God will use those cultures to bring them to to Him. But I want to get back to you your personal walk with Jesus and your and your work as a catechist and then I want to dig into the martial arts area of your life sure so on a personal level as a cradle Catholic you could say that in the very beginning I sort of like every other child just was receiving with grace what was offered to me by my parents and my maternal grandparents in particular my mother's family was not only very devout but my father was often away uh, with deployments in the military and so when that would happen my mother w and and my siblings and I we would live with her parents because my father felt it was important to have a paternal figure being my maternal grandfather have a man of the house to help guide his sons and uh, provide security and and protection and advice over my sister so in a good way, we had that exposure because my mother's father was so intensely dedicated to nurturing his faith. And it, my mother's parents, my grandparents, very interesting contrast because my grandmother had the natural faith of a child where she just accepted everything open eyed and warm hearted and lovingly in such a almost Teresa the little flower kind of way. And then my grandfather was more the intellectual where he questioned everything and he was becoming really immersed in apologetics in part to answer his own questions as well as being being the kind of person that felt a need to be able to answer the question of others and he um, was very dedicated to this and had uh, a proactive like investigative think the archaeologist in Indiana Jones or the detective in Sherlock Holmes approach to his faith where he wanted to overturn every stone and look under every corner to try to know more about his faith. So I witnessed this as a small child and had a curiosity to it. I also, my mother being very ecumenical in spirit, as you said, we're all mixed. So she embraced the Hawaiian culture. At a certain point, I feel like she knew more about it than my father because she studied Hawaiian quilting and Hawaiian feather lay making and she really really got into Hawaiian culture and saw it as a touchstone since she was part Native American and was introducing us to this and I did not know the difference between denominations so my mother had a friend who was a teacher for a Christian school that wasn't Catholic school but she had a way of telling Bible stories that was extremely interactive and delightful. So as a very young child, two and a half, three years old, I remember going through the Bible stories with my mother's friend, not knowing any different friend he was at. as a three-year-old child. I remember that. I remember that feeling that We're Christ is my friend. And we're talking. Later, we're, we're talking with. Uh, we could call you Olohe, as a, a, a teacher, a master in the Hawaiian martial art. Uh, some some traditions would call you Sifu Kaili, uh, but we we uh, we uh, are both practitioners of the martial arts. But ma but uh, Kainoa Lee is a, is definitely a master in what he, do he does. I've gotten to see him. He's on our TV show Long Ride Home. Uh, we're going to come right back and talk a little bit more about his own conversion and then about lessons learned from the ancient Hawaiian art, the ancient Hawaiian martial art of the Lua. Be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up. Disappointment. Dang it, honey, I'm sorry I messed up. Said that more times to my beautiful wife than I want to admit. Disappointed myself. Again. Disappointment. 
We all face it at one time or another, and some of us more times than others. Sure, we often get disappointed in politicians and sport heroes, even in friends and loved ones. But the most damaging kind of disappointment is disappointment in oneself. Hate it when that happens. Puts a real drag on my wagon. No man likes to face up to it. Takes humility, a.k.a. courage, for a man to say he's messed up. Yep. I dread disappointing my wife, my kids, but even more so my Lord. Done it way too many times. Good for me that my wife, my kids, and my Lord are all forgiven and forbearing. My wife moves on once I repent. I find it more difficult moving on even after repenting. I know it's dumb to beat myself up. Won't amount to much except more stupid. So, given we all face being disappointed especially in ourselves, what's one to do? The Psalms of King David help answer that question. That boy was a mighty warrior and a man after God's own heart. Yet he messed up big time more than once, serious like. And he hated it when he disappointed the Lord. Got down on himself real bad, but not for too long. Always rising up in faith, accepting the Lord's forgiveness and going on with his life. Suspect we should do the same. Just because you end up in the pig pen doesn't mean you got to waller in the mud. This is Daniel Baboon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, And for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning the devil says oh no he's up go to deepadventure.com and invite bear to speak Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Kainoa Lee. He's a martial artist master in the ancient Hawaiian art of the, the Lua here and, uh, and has a fascinating story because he's part Native American, part Hawaiian, uh, and uh, has heritage going back to China. And, uh, and he's telling us, sharing with us his conversion, his own experience as a young Catholic uh, coming to a deeper walk with the Lord. He is a catechist as well. So we're going to talk a little bit more this segment about what, how you can apply martial arts uh, to, the, to uh, your spiritual life or to your life of virtue. But first we're going to finish sharing a little bit more about his, uh, his own uh, walk in faith. Thank you, Bear. So as a small child, I spent a lot of time with my mother's parents, my grandparents, who were very devout in their faith and had a great contrast. My grandfather being the kind of person that studies apologetics and really delves into the meaning behind scripture and tradition. And my grandmother being having the faith of a child and having just this very natural loving approach to being with God. And that echoing on through to where, as a small child, I did get that sense that Jesus was my friend. Mm. And what I did not get that a lot of other people referred to is I didn't really have any sort of the negative uh, things that are some people attach to Catholicism. So I didn't have a sense of a guilt trip or anything. But part of that was because, for the most part, possibly my parents might have some jokes about this. But for the most part, I was a pretty good kid. I mean, I didn't... Yeah trouble and 
and I was uh, the opposite of a bully, which is connected to the martial arts story, which I'll get to. Yes, I know a little bit I, about that story. Yeah. I was the bodyguard for the other kids. So if you were getting picked on, you would come to me. And if you were just, I would, I would protect you. If it was your fault, you know, I wouldn't let the bully beat you up, but I would let you know that I knew it was your fault. So as a kid, I was kind of a good kid. Um, but I will say as far as conversion that I did take the confirmation process quite seriously on almost, uh, almost a literary level in the sense that in third grade, because of my grandfather being such an intellectual, I was reading books that were pretty heavy for a third grader. So I was reading The Red Badge of Courage and Moby Dick when I was eight years old, which is kind of a little crazy now that I look back at that. But I remember thinking, you know, would I fall apart if I was confronted with danger, whether it be from nature like the sea, because I grew up surfing my father was a Hawaiian surfer, knew Dukahanamoku, and I grew up in the ocean where you definitely uh, find a respect for the sea and the power of nature. And then I was also in the mountains because I'm an Eagle Scout, so in Boy Scouts I was always climbing things and uh, exploring, and on the mainland with my grandfather uh, going uh, into the mountains in the snow and everything, which was a huge contrast to Hawaii. So the power of nature being part of that, and also human conflict in Red Badge of Courage, that idea of men killing men over differences in ideals and differences in politics and things. You know, very heady concerns for a third grader. So you have to look at why are these bullies trying to hurt these other kids and why are some kids uh, antagonizing and almost inviting the bullies to attack? All these why questions were a big deal for me when I was eight that, years old. Excellent questions, yeah. Anyone one who can answer those kinds of questions is our Lord. So I remember in seventh grade, seventh and eighth grade was when we had formation to for confirmation. And I remember thinking of it like you would in a story from a book or from an old movie where it, I remember it being a life and death decision, like the line in the sand at the Alamo that Colonel Travis makes, or are you willing to die for what you believe in or not? And think that way when you're 12, but that's how I saw it. I saw, I saw it. If I was choosing to be confirmed, I was making a life and death decision and really a life after death decision as well. Right. Because uh, our faith is eternal. So that meant that it was a commitment that I couldn't undo at a time when a lot of my peers were the, kind of the opposite when it came to spiritual beliefs, right? It was, equally popular to think there would be something cool about some crystal or the astrology in the newspaper or um, any other sort of fascination with with uh, religion or cult as you say cult being the root word of culture having to do with religion not having necessarily something to do with jim jones and poison kool-aid but uh that concept was important because then once i stepped across that line in my heart of making a life and death commitment then I was more active in church, altar server. I was in the Columbian Squires, which is like the junior organization of the Knights of Columbus, and helping out with different things at, at church. We had a scout troop at church as well. But then there was another layer, because in high school, I met a pretty girl who knew the Bible inside and out that was not Catholic. And I found out that a lot of Protestants actually knew the Bible better. And I didn't realize that as a Catholic, if we go through years A, B, and C, we actually do read pretty much the whole Bible if you go to daily mass. But at that point in time, at, as a teenager, I wasn't aware of that. So the idea of, of proactively doing Bible study and proactively reading the Word and uh, in the sense coming to a full realization of being born again, as they say, was something that I realized wasn't apart from the Catholic Church. It was already a part of it, but we just don't necess aren't necessarily aware of it unless we delve into it. And that's why I really love like the Bible in a Year program with Father Mike Schmitz. I've I've gone through that, and going through that led me to 
do a lot of artwork because as they say a picture tells says a thousand words and so in my notebook for the oh, bible in the mm -hmm. year, drawings instead of write everything that's, and very, then that's, that's, that's that's very catholic you know the when you look at um the history of the catholic church way back in the day most people were illiterate Absolutely. and so when you go into a cathedral or, or a greek church or you see the icons those were rich pictures yeah. That were telling the stories, the certain gospel stories, or the or the story of the saints. So, of course, Jesus also, in the way he spoke in parables, were picture stories. You know that sometimes communicate the point so much more effectively. And so, you're a martial artist, but you're also an artist. You you work with uh, with paint. Yes, sir. Well, the credit for that goes to my mother because she was an art teacher, and so as a small child, we did a lot of artwork growing up. But I sort of took it for granted, honestly, and didn't really touch it much after college art classes. And then through the course of sponsoring one of my martial arts students to become a Catholic. So that was through the RCIA, now OCIA program. Praise God. And you're, a teach and you're a teacher in RCIA also. Yes, sir. So and awesome. I was teaching, I was teaching uh, fourth and fifth grade. And then because I became a sponsor for RCIA, the priest and deacon at our parish asked me to ask me to assist with being a catechist for the RCA OCIA program. And then one of my friends that I did Bible in the Year with, she was so touched by the artwork in my notebook for Bible in the Year that she said, Oh, when you do your catechism classes, maybe you should do drawings or paintings to go with the lesson. Wow. And the very first one that I did, honestly, was very intimidating. As much as I am not afraid to punch, kick, grapple anyone on the planet, the idea of trying to draw or paint our Lord was extremely intimidating. Can, can you me. show us one? I know the, this is a radio show on EWTN, so you won't be able to see it. But if you go to deepadventure.com, the Bear Wozniak um, Deep Adventure YouTube channel, or you subscribe to this, you'll be able to see it because you'll get the video version also. It looks very starry night like, very, very starry, starry well, night like in some ways. There's a lot of layer to this. I know you bear a surfer, so you can understand that I have this concept of, of surfing as being very connected to faith that, that mm -hmm. a lot of times you can't see it, but you can feel it. You're out in the water and you're, and under the surface of the water, you can feel when the next set is coming. Yes. You just, yes. you just. <laughs> The wind and sea run through you, and you just know yes. when that moment is to paddle, and when that right moment is to pop up, and you allow the ocean to guide you. And that feeling, I've been to the actual places, and with uh, Father Peter Vasco, the director of the Franciscan Foundation of the Holy Land, I renewed my baptism in the Jordan with him. So that and that the whole thing with the Galilee, there's so much having to do oh, with we, water. We have to take a break. We have to take yeah, a so break. The, we have to take a break, um, but we'll we'll be right back. Um, the, the the point is well made. When you go, everyone I ask you, love, what do you love the most about uh, Israel? They'll say that they'll say the Sea of Galilee. And as a surfer, I will feel uh, the motion in the ocean, you know. And the Bible also says those who are the mature sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. They're like the wind; you don't know where they're going or where they're coming from. Surfers are very much like that too. We want to be responsive and sense and 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 draw close to the Lord and be led by the Holy Spirit. We'll talk more with uh, Master uh, Kainoa Lee uh, about his faith as a catechist in the Catholic Church and also about his uh, instruction in the ancient Hawaiian. Uh, martial art called the Lua. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com.
Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Growing up in the martial arts, I noticed there were different reasons that people train. If you look at your own hand, and let's say you're looking at your thumb, for example, one of the reasons is for health and fitness because it's more fun than running. You know, so is surfing, a lot of other activities. But that way you're getting in shape, but you're not noticing it because you're doing something you enjoy. And then second would be character development, that you're becoming a better person, you're becoming uh, more self-disciplined, more focused. And then third, practical, the ability, a life skill like CPR or first aid or learning how to swim, of uh, being able to protect yourself proactively. And then fourth, like your ring finger, sport. So whether it be in boxing or wrestling or judo or fencing or MMA, any type of combat sport, you're challenging yourself. And whether you win or lose, that's humbling and strengthening for you as a person. And then lastly, artistic expression, that through the process of the martial arts as a gymnast or a dancer would, you can express yourself artistically. And then you also do this development in four pillars. So the first pillar being physical, that when you first learn something, you're learning it physically and then the next being intellectual. So you, you're understanding the reason why. And as a kid, I was one of those kids that always asked, well, why do we defend the punch this way? Why do we throw in that direction? That's why you're a teacher, dude. That's why you <laughs> teach. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so it's an evolution, natural evolution. And then third is emotional. And, and this is a component I think is missed by a lot of martial arts classes is that you really have to address. Because what I always share with, students is no good decision is ever made out of anger or fear good decisions are made out of courage and love so you want to be the aloha that mm -hmm. you want to see in the world around you and you have to be that you have to be that aloha and connect with god's love so it can flow through you and then lastly would be the spiritual pillar which is everyone thinks of the martial arts as spiritual but very few are willing to define that and so whether it be the martial arts or whatever your personal passion is the challenge would be, how do you make that a ministry? Because we're all called to be saints. We're all called to be apostles and disciples. So how do you step up in a way that you're sharing that with others in a positive way? And sometimes it can be very subtle. It can be just having a, a book on the shelf or a painting on the wall, something that invites the question. So that if you have someone around you that's searching for direction in their lives or searching to connect, as you mentioned, earlier in this podcast, how naturally around the world, people of every culture naturally have a yearning to know their creator. Mm -hmm. So that's within all of us. And if you are willing to extend that invitation to others, then, you know, you are an evangelist, you are a catechist in your own right. And if you do what you love as a form of ministry, that can be something that can serve you. And I've noticed this in all around the world because I've been very blessed to be able to train Wing Chun Kung Fu in Hong Kong, to train Muay Thai in Thailand, to train uh, fencing in Spain, to train 
French kickboxing or savat French foot fighting in France and in French Polynesia. So all over the world and the, the Filipino martial arts call her Anissa. I was going to say, if you didn't say Eskrima and you live in Hawaii, you missed something. But the yeah, Filipino, no, art, I, Filipino I, art of Eskrima, when I, yep. When I was a kid, it was a big deal because here, like literally, it's martial arts paradise in one sense in that you have people from the actual places in Asia that are experts that, that or, ended or, up. Or Brazil. You know, or, you know, a lot actually, of Brazilians, yeah. Interesting, because I'm also a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And, now, that's saying uh, a lot, because even being uh, uh, a lower-level belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is like being a black belt in most of the other arts. That's, that is saying a lot. No, it's huge. It actually took me the longest. I have black belts in more things than I can count. I remember I, I used to say them all when it was only a dozen or so but now it's more but if you think about it because you're like always music. a learner you're always a learner i yeah. thought i thought olo, olo, olohe in hawaiian meant listener partly but it also means the hairless one i i can send you a picture <laughs> i shaved my everything because Hawaiians you didn't wear much right you kind of fought close to wearing nothing just a malo and and then even that was tied up and so you would shave to make it hard to I be grabbed see. I see. Well, and but but old. it's a great but it's a great title for you personally, as a as a fighter, but also as a listener. You to behold those martial arts, you had to listen. You had to have curiosity. You had to learn. So you're always learning, and then also teaching. And that's what you do with your life now. You 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 said you were making the point that people who um, God will plant certain desires in your heart, and then use that. Like when I in my surfing world, because of what happened with me in my surfing world, my success there. Oh, I got to write a book, and then oh, I got to have a radio show, and, I, and in other words, my outreach, my ministry grew out of what I love, and it has done for you too. You made the point at the beginning that you got to lead someone. You 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 were sponsoring a member of your martial arts class, someone you were teaching in martial arts, to become a Catholic, and that's how you became a catechist. That led you into being more and more a catechist. You know, we've run out of time. We're talking with Master. I call you Master Lee. You're friends with my my own teacher, Master Stephen Hayes. The the, the person who brought ninjutsu, uh, uh, one of the people that brought ninjutsu to the, uh, to the rest of the Western world. Uh, but can you sum up a, a, a message to people that are listening right now in one minute about how they can, about their walk with the Lord, getting going deeper with God? So to make it as simple as possible, You are here for a reason because you were loved into existence by our Lord. Mm. And you might not know what that reason is, but he does. Mm. So do love and do listen and know that your best decisions will be made out of courage and love. And mm. that each one of us, each one of you is meant to do something beautiful, wonderful, courageous, and loving. Amen. To make the a better place for our Lord and for each other. Amen. Thank you. I, I love that. So your, best de your best decisions are made out of courage and love, and a decision isn't a decision unless you take action. We've, we've run out of time. I'm sorry. Uh, we've had Kainoa Lee with us, the master of the mar ancient Hawaiian martial art of, of bone breaking, as we used to say. I don't know if, you, if that, that's what we used to call it when I was on the mainland. The lua and many other martial arts. Uh, and sharing your faith with us too. In in Hawaii, there's tradition of ha. We talked about it at the beginning. To to say aloha is to give breath, and so we always end our our uh, talk story time together here on our radio show with by saying, "May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you." Will you share aloha with me? Aloha. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.